Hiya, how are you all doing? Today I'm tackling the kidney. It's a large topic. I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the kidney. I'm going to go into a huge amount of detail about the nephron itself. I'm going to talk about some key definitions to do with things like excretion, metabolism, etc. Um, the kidney is complicated and it's supposed to be quite a hard topic, but I promise after this video things will be way more straightforward. And as always, if you do have any questions, just make sure you leave them in the comments below. So let's start and think about what our kidneys are like. First of all, they're two fist-sized organs and they sit in the base of your back, around here. They're super important because they're involved in creating urine and they do a hell of a lot of excreting of substances which, which if they were allowed to build up in our bodies would be pretty poisonous and toxic. So they're major excretory organs. So what does the word excretion mean? This is one of those definitions you just need to learn. So excretion is the removal of waste products of metabolism from the body. So metabolism is all the chemical processes which occur in the body and therefore waste products are produced and we need to remove those. And that's what excretion is, the removal of waste products of metabolism. So there are loads of different things we need to excrete, things like urea. Now urea is the breakdown product from excess proteins in our diet because we're not allowed to store excess proteins so what happens is it gets broken down into a substance called urea which we then have to excrete using our kidneys. We also produce a lot of heat, we produce water, we produce lots of salts, we produce carbon dioxide, obviously carbon dioxide is lost through our lungs, excess salts are lost through our skin. So we're taking stuff into our body and then we're removing all the things which could become toxic. There is one thing you do need to know though, and that's the definition of ingestion. Don't get that confused with excretion, it's quite a common problem. Ingestion is not excretion. Ingestion is simply the removal of faeces from the anus. I know that's really awkward, but you need to write it like that to make sure you get the marks in the exam. So pooing is different from excreting, just to be super horrible about the whole thing. Just a quick overview of the kidneys. So there are two kidneys, they receive blood via the renal artery. Now renal is just the word we use to associate with the kidney. So renal artery, renal vein, we're talking about the kidney. So the renal artery provides the kidney with blood, the kidney filters the blood, removes all the poisons, all the excess salts, etc. And then it produces urine. And so it has two real functions, one's filtering and the other one is creating urine because we need to make sure the water content of our blood remains constant so that it's not too watery or it's not too concentrated. Let's start by looking at the anatomy of the kidney. So the outermost edge is called the cortex. And we will talk about the nephron in way more detail, but this is where you'll find most of the nephrons. Then, beneath that is the medulla, the middle part, and that's where the loop of Henle hangs out. Then you have the pelvis, and that's the white structure that comes out of the kidney. And that's where the collecting ducts run down into. And then finally you have the ureter, and that's simply a tube which transports urine that's made by the kidney to the bladder where it's stored. Then it passes along the urethra to leave the body. So let's talk about the nephron in a huge amount of detail. So these nephrons are teeny tiny structures and they're the ones which carry out filtering. So there are like a, over a million nephrons in the kidneys and what happens is blood comes along the renal artery and it enters what's called the afferent arterial and that's just a really wide part. And then it enters a capillary structure called the glomerulus and then it feeds back out and we have an efferent arterial. And the crucial thing is, is that the afferent, the arterial coming in, is wider than the efferent arterial, the arterial coming out. And what that does is it creates pressure. And it creates pressure between the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule, which is the structure which forms the first part of the nephron that surrounds this blood capillary, the glomerulus. So what you find is ultrafiltration takes place. And all that means is that substances are forced out of the blood into the kidney. And the sort of substances we're talking about are things like glucose, salts, both sodium chloride and potassium chloride, urea, bile salts, and amino acids. Crucially, proteins are not allowed to enter the Bowman's capsule, and that's because the basement membrane is too small to allow those proteins to squeeze through. So you really shouldn't find protein in your urine. And if you do, that's kind of a sign that there's something wrong and you could have diabetes or something. But anyway, so ultrafiltration occurs, which is filtering under pressure, Therefore, glucose, some amino acids, salts, things like that, urea, are allowed to enter the Bowman's capsule. Then you enter the next part of the nephron, which is called the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal first, you can say first convoluted tubule if you prefer. And then convoluted meaning twisted. So we can see that this part of the nephron is very twisted. The following part is the loop of Henle, or the loop of Henle, depending on how your teacher pronounces it, followed by the distal convoluted tubule, 
the second convoluted tubule is an easier way of saying that, and then finally the collecting duct where the urine is actually produced. Just so you know, selective reabsorption is a process whereby certain substances are reabsorbed back into the blood, i.e. selective reabsorption. So this, is, this happens in the nephron and it happens in the convoluted tubules. And it's important that we reabsorb all the good stuff, so things like glucose and amino acids and some salts, and that we allow certain other products to just carry on into our urine because they're the toxic ones, they're the ones we want to lose. So that's things like urea. Now remember urea is produced by the breakdown of proteins because we can't store excess protein in the body, so we have to break it down into urea so we can lose it in our urine. So now we're going to focus in on the production of urine. Now it's really important that our water levels in our blood remain pretty constant because if we have too much water in our bodies, then the cells swell by osmosis. I'll talk about osmosis in a different video. But basically water floods into the cells. Because the cells don't have cell walls, they swell up and they burst. So it's really important that we don't do that. But equally it's important that we remain hydrated. So it's a really careful balancing act. So how is water level controlled? Well, it's through our urine, because if we have too much water in our blood, then we'll produce more urine. This will be light coloured, it won't be smelly, and there'll be lots and lots of it, so large volume. However, if we have too little water in our blood, then we'll find that our urine is yellow, it's quite smelly, and it's low in volume. First of all, we call the control of our blood, blood water levels osmoregulation. Osmo means to do with water, regulation means regulating, so we're regulating the water in our blood. So, we have what's called osmoreceptors, receptors which are sensitive to the amount of water in our blood in the hypothalamus which is found in our brain. So the hypothalamus determines whether there's too much or too little water in our blood. Then it sends a message to the pituitary gland which produces a hormone called ADH. Now ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. Just so you know, diuretic is something which makes you wee. So people say that tea is a diuretic and that's because when you drink it you really need to wee. So antidiuretic hormone therefore makes sense that if you have lots of it, you'll produce little urine, little wee. So what happens, I'm going to take an example, for example, that it's overnight and I haven't really drunk. So my hypothalamus will detect that there isn't very much water in my blood. It will send a signal to the pituitary gland to release lots of ADH. ADH travels in my blood to the kidney and it specifically acts on the collecting ducts and it makes the wall of the collecting duct more permeable to water. So what you find is that as the filtrate flows along there, more water is reabsorbed back into, the, back into the bloodstream and there's less water left over to produce urine. And therefore, when there's lots of ADH, you'll find that the urine is low in volume, it's pretty yellow and it's pretty smelly. And that's why. And this is an example of negative feedback, which basically means if you make a change, something will happen in order to oppose that change and bring all the levels back to normal. So let's take a second example if we've drunk loads of water. Again, the hypothalamus will detect that. It will go, wow, okay, lots of water in the blood. We'll send a signal to the pituitary gland. This time, way less ADH will be released. Less ADH travels in the blood to the collecting duct in the kidney, and therefore less water is reabsorbed because the walls of the collecting duct will be less permeable. That means that there's more water left over to flow down the ureter into the bladder, and therefore our urine produced will be light coloured, it won't be smelly, and it will be high volume. So that is really everything you need to know about the kidney. Just remember it's involved in excretion. Remember the definition of excretion, which is the removal of waste products of metabolism from the body. Remember that the kidney is responsible for the production of urine and therefore it's responsible for controlling blood water levels. And that's through the action of ADH. I really hope you found that helpful. Quite a lot to take in. Just make sure you watch it and then maybe re-watch it and make a few notes. And I'll see you guys next time.